Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Food and Farmer series. My name is Stephanie Mock, and I'll be your host today. Our series usually talks to farmers, restaurateurs, chefs, and those who are helping farmers to secure Hawaii's agricultural future and food system here in the islands. Today we have a very special show called Hi Pie, Local Ingredients for Local Business, with a very close friend of mine, Casey Burns, who's the owner of Hi Pie. Casey and I met at a farm festival a couple months ago where we looked at each other and we were like, we know each other. How do we know each other? And we realized the ag community can be quite small sometimes. And we met through a mutual friend, and she had been to our original Parade of Farms event back in 2016, and that's how I remembered her. So it was awesome to connect with her again um, here in 2018 and talk about what she's been up to with her business, High Pie, as owner and head baker of that business. Casey is known throughout the ag community, especially on the windward side, because she uses local ingredients for her local business. She's most well known for her poi banana bread and her famous pot pies, which can be fi found excuse me, in Kakaako. So today I invited Casey on for high pie, local ingredients for local business. And we'll talk to her about how she got involved in baking, how she came to Hawaii, and how she uses those local ingredients here in Hawaii to promote local business that supports our ag community, but also local enterprise. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to Casey today. Thank you, Casey, for joining us. Thanks for having me. I know you're a close friend of mine, but I do appreciate the favor of you coming on to our small little show here about food and farmers. So basically, we'll jump right into it. Um, Sounds good. I want to hear about where you're from originally, how you came to Hawaii, and <clears throat> why are you a baker? <laughs> so I'm from Wisconsin. I came it'll be five years this summer okay and it was I was kind of ready for something new um, an opportunity presented itself to move to Hilo and I took that opportunity and I was there for about a month and then I couch surfed to Oahu um, and kind of hit the ground running with getting getting a job uh, right away um, at the Hawaii Convention Center was actually my first job that I got and then uh, from there, quite a few other jobs all came together. And um, I spent my first year kind of just traveling on the bus and working. And I, I landed a job um, at the Beatbox Cafe where I kind of started my North Shore life. And um, from there, I once I got to the North Shore and kind of like got settled, I knew that I wanted to start my own thing. My history, um, it has been in culinary for many years. I started out cooking, line cooking when I was young, and then um, always, still young. Don't worry. always had <laughs> always had a passion for um, for the restaurant world, for um, for cooking, and um, anyway. So I just kind of moved around with that and stuck with it for a while while I was in my early. 20s, I thought it was probably time to go to school, so I went to school for tourism, travel, and recreation. But while I was going to school, I continued, I continued cooking. Um, so from there, I uh, when I was in on the North Shore, I I wanted to um, see about starting something that that was mine, and doing something with food just made the most sense to me. And having a love of pie, I, <laughs> I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to um, give it a shot with that. So I started, um, I was working with a couple, f well, with um, Paul, who owns Uncle's Ice Cream Sandwiches. I was helping him on his hydroponics lettuce farm and then also helping him make ice cream and, and cookies for his ice cream sandwiches. And I asked him if he would be willing to share his booth with me at the Waimea Farmer's Market. So he said that that would be fine. And so I went and just one day a week would sell pies from his booth. And then um, somebody referred me for a position at the Island Vintage Coffee Shop while I was on the North Shore as a manager. And so I went to that interview and 
they asked me what other jobs I had, and I told them that I had this very tiny baking business, mm -hmm. and they were like, "Well, we need, we need baker, we need baked goods." And I was, I was like, "Okay." So they gave me a list of things that they wanted me to prepare and to bring back the next week, and one of those items was she asked if I could make taro bread, and I was like. Sure. 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 Always say yes. Even though I had no idea what, what taro was at the time. Um, so I looked up some recipes, found one that I really, um, that I liked and kind of put my own spin on it and brought those items back that she had asked for. And they loved it. And they were like, how soon can you get into all the stores? And I remember leaving, I remember leaving the, that interview and going into my car and just crying. I was so happy. Aww. I was like, no way, this is crazy. So it went from like really just kind of out of my house and doing catering events and doing um, functions with friends and, and so on. And like the one day a week at the farmer's market to like having a pretty significant account. And now it's been, you know, it's been a little over three years that we've been with Island Vintage and so much has happened and grown and that opportunity, that platform has given me, you know, the opportunity to, to make those connections and relationships with the farming community and with poi and with, with bananas mainly. And then it's just given, you know, more um, of an opportunity for me to get to know wh how much more I can grow and, and how other areas I can get involved and be of use, um, not only myself, but the business and and you know community as a whole being in Hawaii and, and wanting to really put roots down and and be a part of what's going on and help better you know individual lives my own my business everybody around me and you know kind of what what I represent as as wanting so much to be um, a part of what's going on a piece of it and continue to let that grow wow you just told us your whole life story. I'm sure I missed a few things. But, uh, maybe yeah. a few stories. <laughs> I, I really like the fact that you were talking about, you know, you helped on the farm, you were helping sell at farmer's markets, mm -hmm. you were helping with that value-added chain of, you know, making ice cream sandwiches and then also making your own baked goods. And mm -hmm. I, I think it's important that, you know, a lot of times we focus on ag here, especially myself, I tend to focus on farmers, 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 but without those existing markets and those existing <coughs> outlets and locations that sell, the, the farming is not really necessary, right? So I like the fact that you're like, oh, I worked on a farm and here's the value added and now here's the market and kind of creating in, what am I trying to say, collecting that experience. So mm -hmm. when you start your own business, you're like, this is what I'm looking for. I know how hard it is to grow these things. Right. Maybe not taro itself, but um, yeah. understanding that it, it is a process and you have to create a schedule. So. Yeah, so um, I forgot to mention that High Pie is currently available in 11 lo locations, yeah, right? Yeah, 11 already, can, yes. I, I mean, maybe you can name all 11, but can you name a couple besides Island Vintage that High Pie's Poi Banana Bread and Pot Pies can be found in? So, and or Pot Pies. Yeah, Island Vintage Coffee, all the, all the locations on Oahu. Um, and then Kalapawai Market, Waimanalo Market Co-op, Kakua Market, Butterfly Ice Cream sells He's so creative and such an amazing guy, and he made poi banana bread oh, ice cream. Oh, nice. I don't know. And then he also does the brownie ice cream sandwiches, and um, we do some cookie bars for him. And then the pot pies are at Village Bottle Shop and Tasting Room, and we do, um, yeah, all the pot pies are there. And then we do a monthly rotating special mm -hmm. with them, so definitely go check them out. And he has an array of uh, craft beers, and and wines, um, and then Hey Pier also sells the poi banana bread, so that's kind of our backyard. Our kitchen is in Key Project, is the commercial kitchen that we use. It's a community center. It's where is it located? In Kahalu, and it's a just a super great community center with a lot going on um, for Kapuna to Keiki and a lot of different ways to get involved there. There actually one of the oldest, um, they've been around 50, they're celebrating their 50th anniversary this year. Oh, that's so really awesome for, for a uh, nonprofit community center. Um, so I'm really stoked to be a part of them, of what they have going on. And um, yeah, it's been amazing to be in, the, in that community because of all this, the farming, um, the farming community that exists there, which has been 
really wonderful to be um, to be able to access so closely and mm -hmm. those relationships to be growing and, and building and and of course being in such a small place and having and having access to all that just kind of makes the island more you know accessible as well because you know once you're meeting and getting to know more people it just it extends the opportunities yeah just yeah, abound. Yeah. So you were talking about you started on the North Shore, and now you're mentioning you're on the Windward side. Can you? And yeah. obviously, the great community center that is key project. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, how did you? Did you just walk up one day and say, "Hey, no. I want to use your commercial kitchen"? Yeah. How, how did that relationship come about? So I was. I started on the North Shore, and from the North Shore went to. Um, well, I I met. Oh, so many little steps to get places, right? So, um, but from the North Shore, I went to um, Kakua Market, which is on South in um, University, and it's a great co-op. It's such a little gem in the in in Honolulu. Um, but I started when I started working there. The reason for me even beginning that position um, was they offered me the job to be the baker for the store. And at that time, I really didn't think I needed a job because I was kind of busy with high pie, and I had some small, <clears throat> some small jobs that were seemingly enough um, to get me by. And then um, they offered me the position, and I said, "Well, because I don't really need this job, would you be willing to let me run my business from this kitchen?" And they were like, "Sure." And I was like, "This is crazy. Who says yes to that?" <laughs> so and easily, so, too. So yeah, it was like they're like, "Okay, okay it sounds good." <laughs> and so um, I started like that following week, and it was like such an amazing opportunity to be able to. That was how I met Paul and Charlie Rapoon, and how that relationship started with just bananas. They would sell me bananas for the Poi Banana Bread, so I would bake for the store during the day, and then bake for High Pie at night, and then disperse from there um, from that kitchen. So it was awesome. Um, so I learned a lot and I grew a lot as as a baker and and my own skill level and developed some recipes while I was there and some of the things that are in some of the locations came from that time. Um, Tim and Darren approached me to do the pies for Village in that because I was at um, Kakua Market for one year and anyway so in that time I developed a lot of the pot pies and and got everything ready. So Kakua Market was kind of like the sampling space, you know? I, I could just had free reigns to create whatever I wanted and, and I really just blew out the bakery and f as far as like, I couldn't make enough stuff. I was like so excited to have <laughs> try this, this try access this, try to, this. well not only that, but have access to all this local produce and like everything that was in there was, okay, can you use this, can you use that, can you make something with this? So I really, really got into quiche and I got into, you know, just doing sweet and savory baked goods like so much stuff and so that was really fun and then um, the relationship with Paul and Charlie grew the bananas and then and then it turned into taro or it turned into poi and then um, at towards the end of that year I was kind of like okay I think I'm ready and I was getting busier and village was about to open and and high pie was kind of ready to stand on her own um, so I mentioned to to Paul and Charlie that I was looking for a space and they were like oh well, let's call our brother John who used to be the um, the director of Key Project so I met them at the farm and I met John and then I met the kitchen manager at the time and and everything just came together they got the, the equipment I needed the mixer and and uh, they had a, an oven brought in it was it was amazing it all came together really quickly and it's been just such a blessing and such a an amazing series of events that have like I know I'm where I'm supposed to be I think it's a really it's a I feel re reassured of that on a regular basis mm -hmm. of like this is where I'm supposed to be and this is what I'm supposed to, the work that I'm supposed to be doing and and I'm constantly growing and I'm constantly learning and it's just like a labor of love and it's been so much fun mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah, definitely seeing those opportunities, but also taking advantage of them with your existing skills, but also expanding, yeah, exactly. utilizing that tight-knit community right. to not not only find local ingredients, but help build your local business, but also support the community at the same time yeah. and keeping those values at the forefront of your mind for your business, but also your life as well. Right. So we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back after our break, we're going to learn more about how Casey makes poi banana bread and pot pies. We'll share some, um, we'll share some photos, excuse me, 
me from her kitchen. So we'll see what she does behind the scenes um, in making that poi banana bread and pot pies. And we'll just talk a little bit more about what her day-to-day -day life is and what she needs from you, the audience, and all those farmers, and especially bananas. So we're going to be talking about bananas, poi banana bread, and baking. We'll be right back. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at 3 o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists, both from here and the mainland, on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. Hey, aloha, Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation. We have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii. Uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand the Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Aloha. Hi, welcome back. We are joined by Casey Burns, owner and head baker of High Pie, for our show today titled High Pie, Local Ingredients for Local Business. The first half of our show featured Casey's background, which um, utilized a lot of opportunities that were provided to her, and she capitalized on them from coming to Hawaii, utilizing her culinary experience, and kind of just word of mouth and seeing what opportunities were out there for her famous baked goods, such as poi banana bread, pot pies, and a diversity of other products that she's able to make. The second half of our show, we're going to feature more behind the scenes look, see how she makes them, and talk about how did she come up with the recipe, and basically what she needs from you, the audience, to help her business grow, and how we can also support our local farmers in that endeavor. So we're going to pull up some photos right now and just give you a behind the scenes look. All right, Casey, so obviously we see a bunch of bananas. <laughs> yes. Can you explain what this is besides the obvious that they're bananas, but also why do you have so many? Oh, and that's not, yeah, that, that's seemingly a lot, but really it's, it's uh, we go through quite a bit of bananas each week. Um, that quite, is a what's banana. Quite a bit? What's quite a bit? Well, so we get about 100 pounds right now from okay. Kualoa Ranch that gets delivered every week. Okay. And then from the, from the local backyard farmer, um, whatever, they ha whatever they have, um, they'll bring to the kitchen and drop off. And, and last month we were kind of, we were short for a lot of the months. There wasn't enough bananas. So there's either a feast or famine these days mm -hmm. with like there's so much or there's not enough. And... So I always encourage anybody who has even a few trees in their yard or has a few hands at a time, if they want to have a little quick cash, they're more than welcome to come to the kitchen and, yeah. and I'd be happy to buy them. Yeah. But that's a locker, actually. That was a like an office cabinet and I, I initially was going to spend some money on like a ripening locker. Right. A or a ripe, yeah, like some fancy <laughs> thing. And Charlie was like, well, I have this cabinet. What do you think about this trying that? Cabinet. And I was like, yes, yeah. sounds good. Let's do it. Yeah. So maybe we could pull up some other photos. Here's Casey, actually, at a recent banana workshop that was hosted by my organization, Oahu RCND. And we had a banana workshop at Key Project, which she's been talking about, basically connecting local banana experts with um, gardeners and local farmers who are interested in controlling bunchy top virus um, of bananas, but also just learning good techniques and stewardship practices for bananas. But here's Casey specifically with her famous poi banana bread that was provided to our participants at the Oahu RCD workshop, and I must admit, I took this photo. So, um, <laughs> kudos to me, I guess. Not so, a bad shot. yeah. So that's poi banana bread. That's Our poi banana participants bread. absolutely loved it. Um, and you also have a very active Instagram, which that photo I took from your Instagram. Yes. Um, just kind of sharing, you know, where you are and what mm -hmm. kind of products you have. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, all the photos today were from your Instagram. Mm -hmm. So let's look at some of the others to see your staff. Who yes. do we have here? So we have Nikki, a.k.a. my doe darling, <laughs> um, and Olivia, who 
Uh, Nikki's been with us a year, and Olivia's been with us for six months this month. Um, they're both so fun and have brought just immense amount of entertainment and skill to the kitchen. So when Nikki came, she actually had a hard time even cooking at home, and now I taught her how to make dough, and she just crushes it. She does such a good job. And yeah. Olivia is amazing. She does great prep. She's she's great at helping me develop new stuff and loves to do, like, a healthier style baking. So she really loves the, the vegan, gluten-free stuff. So it's just been a joy to have both of them. And we're growing and, you know, looking for new, t new talent, new yeah. skill. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so maybe we could pull up a photo of the um, poi banana bread. I love this photo. Um, so you talked about this is what is sold at Island Vintage, right? Yep, at all the locations. Um, but Island Vintage sells it by the slice. Mm, okay. As well as... Um, so the, people can get a taste there, and then where can they buy loaves? Yeah, they can buy loaves at... So this is Heia Pier mm -hmm. in Kaneohe, and then there's Kalapawai Market, Waimanala Market Co-op. Kukua Market, and then um, at Butterfly Ice Cream, he also sells it by the slice. Yeah. So, and so, how did you come? I mean, did you come up with the idea for poi banana bread? Did someone mention it to you? How did? How yeah. Did you so it was that? when I was um, Island Vintage was like, would you? Could you make a taro bread? And that was when I looked around right. and found a recipe, tweaked it, made it what I made it. You know, made it my own, and um, and people love it. People yeah. really love it, and I was always surprised how that it didn't already exist. Mm -hmm. you know, I know it's, now, it's such a good idea. Yeah. Like, I'm surprised. I'm, yeah, I'm sure there's like home bakers who have done it, but there um, yes, hasn't I'm been sure. a, a commercial enterprise mm -hmm. of it yet. So I'm glad that right. you've been able to capitalize yeah. on that, and it, it's something that sticks in people's minds because I feel like everyone grows up with banana bread. Mm -hmm. If you're from the mainland, if you're from Hawaii, like yes. everyone knows this, but to then have that really local poi banana bread, it's definitely an identifying marker of Hawaii. Well, and I think too the fact that I we use um, we use really good poi, mm -hmm. you know, arguably the best poi mm -hmm. in. On Oahu, maybe in all of Hawaii, but the the you heard it here. The, <laughs> the Rapun, Paul, Paul and Lori make the Waihole poi, right? And then Kako Evie is the other source that we have. Um, and then on the off times that they don't have enough taro to make the poi that we need, then we do use taro brand poi mm -hmm. um, like on rare occasions. So, but but using those sources that are that are made with such loving attention and generations of mm -hmm. skill and um, yeah and talent. keeping and keeping that enterprise in the community right yeah absolutely. Like all that all that business isn't being exported mm -hmm. elsewhere it's it's really providing community opportunities like you said and that was really a point and that was really um, an intention in the beginning of once it started and once I once I started to those relationships started to form I mean, I grew up in Wisconsin. I grew up working on dairy farms as a child. Um, and what that means, you know, like that having that community, having the family all rooted together, you know, creating, growing, being a part of it is like, there's nothing like that. And so for me, it's such a big part of my own value system and what matters to me. So there are times that you have to spend a little more to get good quality, to give back really ultimately to create something you're proud of mm -hmm. you know so it's not it's inve it's an investment for for a happy healthy life there you go yeah. You know? I don't know. I think it really is. I really like how you're talking about this tight-knit community and creating this community essence. But you've done that with your team mm -hmm. um, at Hi Pie. You have your own little dough darling you mentioned. It's yeah. Nikki. You know, you've created a little family there. Uh -huh. You have a family um, kind of community with the Rapoons and sourcing local ingredients. But then you're also all those relationships that you've built with all the local outlets you were talking mm -hmm. about, those 11 locations. Exactly. And it's only going to expand. So right. really utilizing that word of mouth, but also um, capitalizing on those existing relationships and seeing where they can take your business to the next level. Right. So I thought we could talk a little bit about the pot pies now. Um, so I think we have a photo of the pot pies. So aren't those delicious, everyone? I think everyone needs to go to Village. Yes, in you must go to Village. Yes. And um, that's the only place people can get pot pies that's right it. now? Um, well, they can come to Key, but I, you know, we're kind of working on uh, doing... Being able to order offline, mm -hmm. so it's a 
it's something we're working on right now, and hopefully that will be up and running. But the village creates the ambiance. They have a, a, an amazing selection of craft beer yeah. and wine on tap, and so please go there. And we do some special. We do specials monthly for them. Mm -hmm. What's um, the current special? So we just wrapped up Buffalo Chicken, Ooh, okay. which is like a riff off Buffalo Chicken Wings. Right. Turned out awesome. Nice and, uh, I don't even food. know if I made it to the heat <laughs> level that everybody wanted it to be, but it did, that last batch, I think we got, it was good. It definitely, you, you felt like you ate a wing, you right. know? Yeah. Um, and then this next month is going to be Shepherd's Pie, which is a crowd favorite. Everybody loves the Shepherd's Pie. I yeah. think it's, my opinion is it's because it has mashed potatoes on it. Well, yeah. Anyway, to eat cheesy mashed potatoes, mashed potatoes <laughs> you're doing okay. Yeah. And are, you know, are you trying to source as many ingredients for your pot pies locally as possible? I know you can't get 100%. No, yeah. So we, that's something else. You know, I, we don't do a, a lot of sourcing with um, farmers for that. And mainly what we use all the time are carrots, mm -hmm. celery, potatoes, those are some main ingredients that we're that that we use every week that we constantly need onions, um, and we currently, like I said, we're not sourcing those. But I would be totally willing to and open yeah. to to sourcing them. Yeah, we just started doing kabocha from um, Dave. Got yeah. some of Dave's yeah. kabocha. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm uh, I'd love to do a lot more of that for the pies as mm -hmm. well. So yeah. yeah. Um, do you have any kind of like crazy ideas for pies that are coming up? I know you said shepherd's pie is a local favorite, but yeah. what's like your, do you have any ideas brewing right now? Um, well, so every summer I do a summer tasting and it's like a way to say thank you to um, the people that I do business with, the friends that have supported me. Um, and so this year, it's every summer, um, last year was that the Rapoon Farm, the year before that was on the North Shore. This year, probably going to be at Kako Evi. And um, we're going to hopefully do a, well, we were talking about killing one of the sheep on the farm oh, and doing okay. some really classic, traditional, like, um, Australian meat pies. Wow. So I'm kind of excited to play with some of those, like, traditional staples mm -hmm. of, you know, where the whole meat pie comes from, playing around with that. But... As far as what's to come, we have, we're going to do a, um, what do we have? We have the whole year, rest of the year set. All right. Well, I would stay tuned, you know? Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Go check oh. out Village and, and try something over there. <laughs> yeah. And, and people can let you know if they're interested in certain, you know, types of pies or they, you know, they really want a certain type or, hey, yeah. Casey, experiment with this. Yes. So. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, thank Always you so much ideas. for joining us today. Thank you for I wish having you, me. I mean, you're a great friend of mine. I wish we could chat all day. Yes. We can't do it on camera, though. So I, <laughs> I want to I thank um, Casey Burns from High Pie for joining us in the studio today for our show, High Pie, Local Ingredients for Local Business. We talked about her experience here in Hawaii starting a business that uses local ingredients from farmers on the Windward side and throughout the islands as well. So High Pie can be found um, in 11 locations. They sell poi banana bread, and they're also known for their pot pie at the village in Kaka'ako. So we're going to throw up some of their information on the screen right now, their website, which is highpiehawaii.com. And they also, she has a great Instagram. I encourage you to follow her and like everything that she posts. She posts a lot of things about upcoming events, and that's hot, at highpie underscore NS. We'll see you next time on Hawaii Food and Farmers. Mahalo.